Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Tuesday morning, September 12th, 2023. Still using our daily bread. Why is that backwards? I pushed the button. You know, apparently I didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, so September 12th. Remember, you can get these at ourdailybread.org. You can get a hard copy or you can get an online devotional. You can print a devotional. September 12th, Psalm 37, verses 5 through 7. And it's entitled, Be Still by Kimya Loader. So Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. So Kimya writes, After I've gotten settled into the chamber, my body floating completely Comfortably, comfortably above the water, the room went dark and the gentle music that had been playing in the background went silent. I'd read that isolation tanks were therapeutic, offering relief for stress and anxiety, but this was like nothing I've ever encountered. It felt like the chaos of the world had stopped and I could clearly hear my innermost thoughts. I left the experience balanced and rejuvenated, reminded that there is power in stillness. We can rest most comfortably in the stillness of the presence of God, who renews our strength and grants us the wisdom we need to tackle the challenges we face each day. When we're still, silencing the noise and removing distractions in our lives, God strengthens us so we can hear his gentle voice more clearly. Psalm 37, 7. While sensory deprivation chambers are certainly one form of stillness, God offers us a simpler way to spend uninterrupted time with him. He says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father. Matthew 6, 6. So that's Jesus. And then he teaches on. Pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, the model prayer. God will guide our steps and allow his righteousness to shine brightly through us when we seek the answers to life's challenges in the stillness of his magnificent presence. Psalm 37, 5 through 6. So what are some things that consume your time? Social media? Tweeter? Twitter? Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram. Do you have to constantly check your emails? Wouldn't it be all right if the person waited, you know, eight hours? I mean, if it's your boss, you might want to return the email soon. But do you always have to be on top of it 24-7, even on the weekend? When I worked shortly for a company, they wanted me to check my emails on Sunday. I'm not checking my emails on Sunday. That's my day. You don't get that day. I'm not checking on Saturday. You have a contract for me to work Monday through Friday. Not Sunday. <laughs> anyway, so I was late for a meeting. And I didn't really care. Because I knew I was going to quit. How can you make room, make more room for quiet time with God? Get rid of some of the distractions. Do you have a solitary prayer place or a prayer time? Sometimes it's after all the kids go to bed. And you get that half an hour to yourself, or maybe even an hour if you're lucky, or maybe five minutes if you're lucky. <laughs> but you get some alone time with God, or maybe it's early in the morning before anybody gets up. Let's pray. Dear Father, I know I get caught up in the fast pace of life. Help me to be still, making room for you in everything I do. In Jesus' name, amen. If we don't take time to be still with God and pray to God and learn from God, we're going to um, not hear from God. We're not going to feel the promptings of the Spirit. So there's time to go away from the world, back up, get into your prayer closet, find a time every single day, write it into your calendar. Don't go on your tweeter, your Twitter, your Snapchat, or your Facebook first thing in the morning. Spend that time with God. Or before you go to bed, don't check your emails. Spend that time reading a devotion. And then listen for God. See what he has to say. He's got plenty to say. Just we're not listening. So um, I hope this was helpful for you today. I will see you tomorrow. <clears throat> um, until then, have a good day.